Matt Tokind is the project of Jay, a classically trained musician, and myself, a computer music nerd. In order to bring it from the studio to the stage, we invited Jorn. He is playing drums and triggering samples, and Jay is playing keys and violin. My setup is the technical heart of the performance. It should fit in one case I can carry. It should feel like I'm playing an instrument and not just launching scenes. It should enable me to process in real time what Jay and Yorn are playing. It should enable me to play some very complex sounds we produce in the studio. Let's give it a closer look. Push is dedicated to all the sound, it's like my instrument. I can play synthesizer, I can launch clips, single shot samples or play samplers and control the macros of those. Um, this controller is kind of an audio mixer where I have on the left side the controls and volumes and sends and some EQs of the sounds that I'm using from Push. On the right side I have all the sends and, and, and the effects that I can be routed into each other from the middle section. This one is a, is a looper, pretty much. Each channel is, uh, is a looper, and the last one is controlling the cow spot. The iPad is, there's two apps that I really like because they give me a sense of touch on the sound, and I can still send sounds from all over the set into the iPad resample and play it back. And the launchpad is actually used as a matrix. So I have all the inputs from one side, all the outputs of my set on the bottom, and I can just assign what comes in into what comes out. The little monotron is just to make noise when I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> Looking at push, I need a kind of one page setup that gives me control on all the instruments for every song that I need. And I can switch through scripts through different songs. So when I switch the song, it loads the right instruments, the right macros and everything. So I don't have to go through session or note or to device or mix. I just have everything that I need for every song in one page. I organize everything in a drum rack that is like a layout of 64 by 64. And each section controls different parts. I usually have on this corner like single shot sounds that I can play throughout the songs when it's needed. On this side, I have single shot loops that are loaded into simplers and warped with the time of the song. Up here, I have like MIDI notes that are routed internally and they can control clips in the session. So I can launch clips and control the volumes. For example, here I have a bass that I can bring in and out when I need through the song. And here I have MIDI notes that are routed again internally to a VST that is playing a synth that we use in studio. And through these macros I can actually control the, the sounds of that instrument. This control is dedicated to take care of all the signal flow that goes uh, through the project. So on my left side, I have volumes and a bit of a cue of all the sounds that come from push. For example, here I have a, a arpeggiator running that I can bring up. And, and the right side is taking care of volumes and the macros of all four sends that are always the same for every song. And, uh, and kind of resemble the, the effects that I use in studio a lot. Um, going through each one of them, the first one, for example, if I bring it up, is a, is a spectral delay. They create this kind of um, spectral sounds, uh, kind of reverby. The second one is a grain delay that pitches up the sound one octave or pitches it down one octave or kind of blends in the two things and adds a, a bit of a, a vintage reverb. The third one is an echo. We control on feedback. And filter. The fourth one is kind of a shimmer reverb with saturation and another reverb after just to use the freeze button. 
of that reverb so I can actually stop the sound and keep that running and I can play with it and create textures and bring it up and down. What I particularly like is that I can actually route every send into any other send. So for example, let's open the echo again. I can send this echo now into the grain delay. I can send the grain delay to the spectral and maybe the spectral to the last one that creates like the more noisy one. I have kind of a secret button here that creates like a big rumbly effect when I bring it up and it's pretty much like all these sounds are going always into another another send that has like it's filtered down to the base and using a grain delay to, to create this big rumble. And I can go a bit like crazy, I can even open different one and try and make it really strange and I have a little button here that actually resets all the sends. So I can just cut down everything. This controller is dedicated to three loopers, the first three channels, and each one of them has the same exact setup. So let's look just at the first one. Uh, I have some samples here running. And I can just hit this button, this map to the recording, and it will, will record one bar. I have down here uh, controls for pitching, so I can pitch it up. And let's take away the samples so we can hear the loop going. I can pitch up, pitch down, reverse, and send to effects. All of those. As for the effects, uh, send, I can route loopers into loopers, so I can open the first one that will go into the second on the third, I decide to record on the second. That I want now on the third one too. Bring back the samples. I have a filter there, so I'll start playing with those, send it to effect. And when I want to just go back to normal, instead of having to go and, and stop each one of them, I have a little reset button here that stops the loop, clears the loop, and reset the, the, the preset. The fourth channel of this controller is dedicated to a mini cow spud. I kind of like using it as a looper. You can, with your hands, move and choose the beginning of the loop and reverse it and these kind of things. I have a volume here, a, um, a cutoff filter here, and I can send to all the effects. One thing I do live is, for example, this synthesizer uh, that is going to this effect. And then when a break comes, I send the effect to the cow spud Pressing hold, I kind of grab it and then stop. So there's a big drop and then I can bring it up slowly. And open it with to the effects. I wanted to integrate the iPad in my setup because um, to have the feeling of actually playing with, with my hands the waveform. Uh, I'm routing audio in and out from the project through the USB cable via an app called Studio Mux. And the two apps I'm using to actually play uh, are Borderlands and Sampler. Uh, this is Borderlands, that is a like, glanular sampler. And you can either load sounds or you can resample sounds on the fly. Just record. Stop and start playing. So I create kind of a cluster of little points that I can make it a bit more percussive 
M frequent and change the volume. And I have a router here and I can play with effects, etc. The second up is sampler. That is a six track sampler and you can load sounds and actually start playing with your hands. So like it's kind of scrolling through. So you can do uh, these kind of things. And it gives really a tactile kind of way of playing. And this one is too connected to effects.